Welcome to an enlightening podcast from IslamPodcasts.com. We encourage our listeners to please comment and let us know how we can grow in our knowledge to better serve our community. Please remind your family and friends to also visit IslamPodcasts.com for engaging discussions on current events, Islamic guidance, Quran, Tafsir, Sira, and much more. When news emerged that an Egyptian had been killed by a man from Banu Israel, this was no longer a simple killing. This was not a matter for the police anymore, it was a political matter. An emergency meeting was convened at the highest level of the government by Fir'aun, and a death warrant was issued for, the, for Musa alayhi salam. Join me in part two. In the second part of the epic story of Musa alayhi salam, we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preparing Musa for the difficult job that lays in front of him. We see Musa as a man who cannot tolerate injustice and he is compelled to act whenever he sees injustice. We see the trait of fear and self-preservation in a people that are subjugated. And we see Musa alayhi salam end up in Madian where he becomes a shepherd, a job many prophets had before they assumed the office of prophethood. So many years have passed since the first part of the story of Musa alayhi salam. He is now a mature man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants Musa alayhi salam knowledge and sound judgment. So Musa alayhi salam is being prepared by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the difficult job of being a prophet and leading and looking after his people. Knowledge alone without the ability to have sound thought process to make a judgment is no use to the possessor of knowledge and no use to the people he lives with. Such a person is little better than a donkey that carries books. A donkey cannot benefit from the books that they are carrying and they are only a burden to the donkey. Similarly, a man with knowledge, but without sound judgment, will not be able to benefit from the knowledge he has, and that knowledge will become a burden for him on the day of judgment. How many scholars do we have who f allow themselves to be used by governments to support their tyranny or oppression? Without sound judgment, they lend their knowledge to justify whatever the rulers want justifying. So we see scholars legitimizing the rule of tyrants and scholars issuing fatawa to declare war on other Muslim lands for the benefit of foreign nations. An incident occurred when Musa entered the city. He saw two men fighting, one from his people and the other an Egyptian. وَدَخَلَ الْمَدِينَةَ عَلَى حِينِ غَفْلَةٍ مِّنْ أَهْلِهَا فَوَجَدَ فِيهَا رَجُلَيْنِ يَقْتَتِلَانِ فَوَجَدَ فِيهَا رَجُلَيْنِ يَقْتَتِلَانِ هَذَا مِنْ شِيعَتِهِ وَهَذَا مِنْ عَدُوِّهِ فَاسْتَغَاثَهُ الَّذِي مِنْ شِيعَتِهِ عَلَى الَّذِي مِنْ عَدُوِّهِ فَوَكَزَهُ مُوسَى فَقَضَى عَلَيْهِ قَالَ هَذَا مِنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ عَدُوٌ مُضِلٌ مُبِينٌ the man from his people called out to Musa salam for help. So Musa did not hesitate and went to stop the fight. But the Egyptian disputed with Musa and Musa struck him, inadvertently killing him. Even though this was not his intent, Musa salam became remorseful and begged Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him. A non-Egyptian killing an e Egyptian was a big issue. So Musa -Islam was fully aware of that. As fate would have it, the very next day, the same man was in a quarrel with another man. The same man calls out to Musa for help, knowing that he was already on dangerous ground. 
Musa's dislike for injustice didn't allow him to watch idly. He recognized that the Israelite was the cause of the problem and went to intervene. Now, up till this point, no one knew who killed the Egyptian the day before. But the, the man from Banu Israel, in order to deflect the attention from himself, exposed Musa by mischievously saying, Are you going to kill me like you killed yesterday? قال يا موسى أتريد أن تقتلني كما قتلت نفسا بالأمس. Oppression creates fear, and fear makes a person only worried about self-preservation. Even though Musa had helped this man the day before, he had no qualms of throwing him under the bus to save himself. And just like today. The fear created amongst the Muslims by terror legislation and the war on terror. It's not difficult for those that have done wrong and want to protect themselves agree to spy on Muslims. Because the killer of the Egyptian is now known to be a non-Egyptian, the killing takes a whole new meaning. Just like in the West, if a white extremist kills, it is just a killing. But when a Muslim kills, it is terrorism. And the highest level of government gets involved by calling a cobra meeting. And so the Egyptian government, government met to discuss this and passed the death sentence on Musa alayhi salam. A man from the other side of the city came running to warn Musa and to tell him to escape immediately. The government was out to have him killed. So Musa alayhi salam fled without having time to pack or take any provisions. Musa a.s. took the long and arduous journey across the desert on foot to Madian. The fear of being caught drove Musa on. His feet were scorched by the hot sand and his lips were dry with thirst. Suffering from hunger and fatigued, after journeying for eight days, he finally arrived at a well in Madian where he slumped. As he lay there, fatigued, he noticed a large group of people drawing water for their animals. And at some distance from them, he saw two women who were keeping their animals back. He asked them, what is the matter with you two? And they said, we cannot water our animals until the herdsmen leave. Our father is an old man and he has sent us to fulfill this task. So as tired and hungry as he was, he intervened and took the animals. The other men had blocked the water with a larger rock. So he moved it and watered the animals. He then withdrew back to the shade and begged his lord. My lord, truly I am in dire need of any good which you may send me. Just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help came immediately to his mother when he was a baby by having him return to her, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded immediately to the dua of Musa alayhi salam. One of the two women then came back to him, walking shyly and said, My father invites you so that he may duly reward you for having watered our flocks for us. Musa welcomed his invitation and accompanied the maiden to her father. Musa could see that they lived comfortably in a happy and peaceful household. He introduced himself and told the old man about the misfortune that he had and com which compelled him to leave and flee from Egypt. The old man comforted him. Fear not, you have escaped the wrongdoers. Musa's gentle behavior was noticed by the father and his daughters. The kind man invited him to stay with them. Musa felt at home with this happy household, for they were friendly and they were God-fearing. One of the daughters suggested to her father that he employ Musa as they were in need of a strong young man who was trustworthy. They needed someone just like Musa. The father asked her, how she could be so sure of his trustworthiness in such a short time. And she replied, 
when I asked him to follow me back to our house, he insisted that I walk behind him so he would not have to gaze upon my body. The old man was pleased to hear this and he approached Musa salam and said, I wish to marry you to one of my daughters on condition that you agree to work for me for a period of at least eight years. This offer suited Musa salam well. For being a stranger in this land, he would soon have to search for shelter and work. And this was an offer on a plate. And so Musa salam was married, found a home and employment in response to his dua. He became a shepherd. An apprenticeship many men served before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called them to the office of prophethood. Musa salam was a man who could not sit idly by if there was some injustice taking place. We saw that on numerous occasions. So it's no surprise that the Prophet wasallam said that Umar al-Farooq is most similar to Musa. Now even though Bani Israel had lived in Egypt for many many generations, the Egyptian government not only despised them but treated them as second class immigrant citizens which is why when Musa alayhi salam was charged for killing an Egyptian it was treated so seriously that the government got involved it was no longer a police matter we see that same parallel in the world today with the so-called western-led war against terror and the various laws passed in western countries that discriminate against Muslims so when a killing takes place it's just a killing but when a Muslim is involved in the killing, suddenly it takes the, the color of terrorism and it's no longer a police matter. It becomes a government matter. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Podcasts on current events, Islamic guidance, Quran Tafsir, and Sirah are available at islampodcasts.com as well as on iTunes. Rate, review, and comment and let us know how we can grow in our knowledge to better serve our community. Please subscribe, share, and tell a friend about islampodcasts.com.